Go ahead and start. Okay. Hello again, uh, those of you who have seen me possibly start it twice. My name is David Coleman, and I'm a speaker, and I'm known around the world as the dating doctor, but I also talk to parents and I talk to students about uh, leadership and team building and relationships and acclimating the college life and having the best college experience possible. I talked earlier to your children in the Physical Education Center. It was fabulous. There were over 700 of them, and they were distanced, and they all had their face masks on. And by the way, the reason I'm not wearing one now, I did have one on earlier when I was talking to your children, or if you're a guardian or a family member, whoever it has, the student has to do with you. I did have a mask on earlier. I do not have one on here in the studio, as I am all alone in here with the only other people working quite far away. So they're safe from me. I'm safe from them, and I can breathe a little bit. I also want to give you a phone number, if you'll all grab something, or if you actually want to go ahead and send a quick text uh, test, uh, text to this number, let me give you the number of 419-721-6096. Once again, that is 419-721-6096. That is your Director of Undergraduate Admissions, Sean Jordan, who is a wonderful guy who's been hosting me today. If you have any questions for me about college life, about any of the things that I talk about during the program, I'm also going to stop during the program and allow people to ask me questions as well. But you can even begin now to say, hey, is he going to cover this? Is he going to cover that? If there's something you'd really like me to cover on behalf of your children, I would love to do that. I also want to tell you what an engaging audience they were today. And given everything that they have been through in the last three, six, eight months of our lives, they were really, uh, they were involved in the program. They were engaged. They answered. They interacted with each other to the amount that they were allowed to and kept their distance. And really, you should be very proud of them. Your children are going to be fabulous here. And I've put together a program for you, so let's go ahead and begin. Uh, number one uh, thing that I'd like to talk about today is this. The reason I'm in front of you is basically I've done 5,000 programs around the country and the world and I was uh, hired by Sony Motion Pictures to promote the movie Hitch, which I did for a few years. I've been on approximately 3,500 college campuses over the course of my career, and I've been a lucky, very fortunate, to be a part of Finley's orientation program for a good number of years now, and probably the number one reason that I love doing the art of college parenting, and the subtitle is Navigating Uncharted Waters, and have they ever been more uncharted than right now, is because I have a sincere desire for not only for your children to be successful in college, but to be wildly successful. And I've had the pleasure of navigating the careers of two young women, my own daughters, who have gone through undergraduate, and they both have master's degrees now. So I believe I have a little bit of knowledge, not only from the people that I've talked to around the world and the number of college campuses I've been on, but navigating my own children through the process. So let me do my absolute best to help you. Here are kind of the rules for the program today. You're the stars of the show. So if you want to take advantage of that phone number, at any point in time, Sean's going to stop me and go, hey, David, we've got a great question. And I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll answer that question. But I want this to be an involved session with you. I'm not just going to talk at you. I'm going to be pretty candid. I'm going to be pretty direct. I'm going to be pretty honest. My goal is for you to walk away from this feeling like you have a better handle on what the college experience is going to be and the transition for you and your, ch your child or the student in your family, uh, not only for them, but for you. And some of you, which I'll talk about in a minute, this isn't your first college experience. Some of you are what I call VIPs, and I'll get to that in just a minute, which is right now. A VIP stands for Veteran Informed Parent. It means this isn't your first rodeo. It means that you've had children in college before, and you could just as easily answer some of the questions or cover some of the topics that I'm going to cover today if you were standing in my place. So let's also do this. Let's say that I get asked a question today or I'm covering an area and you think you have something valuable to contribute to this program, please text Sean. Tell him what your name is, what part of the country you're texting us from or where you're at. Uh, not necessarily what part of the country you're texting from, but uh, what, what uh, part of the country you may live in at this particular point in time or where your student is coming from. And if you have something valuable to add to that discussion, please, please, please join us. And I'll give this one more time for anyone who might have just come in. 419-721-6096. 419-721-6096. Text Sean and say, hey, I've got a comment. I've got a question. Will he answer it? Let me also say this. Uh, there's a chance that I might say something that makes you take pause. 
I might say something that makes you laugh. I might say something that makes you cry. You may agree or disagree with something that I say. Any of that and all that is fabulous. That's what, that's what our country is about. That's what a great dialogue is about. I only ask this. Take the information with you. And if there's something, again, that you can contribute, please do. I would love for that to happen. I am not paid to say this. I do not work for the University of Finley. They don't, they don't say, hey, David, by the way, during your program, say something nice about us. That's not who I am, and that's not what I'm doing. I have been to over 3,000 colleges across America, and I will tell you this. I believe you've chosen one of the 10 best schools in America, and I'm, I mean this sincerely. <clears throat> I believe you've chosen one of the 10 best schools in America for your child to attend. I don't want to say for you to send, because some of you are sending your children. Some of your children are working very hard to also send themselves. I know it's a family and it's a group effort. Why do I feel this way? Number one, it's one of the prettiest campuses I've seen it. If you happen to have been here in the last day or so, if you came and dropped your children off or were part of the process of them moving into a hall, you saw how absolutely beautiful this campus is, especially out by the arch, that whole area of campus. But I've been walking around today. It's absolutely beautiful. Number two, everything you want your children to do, if they want to be involved in student government, if they want to be involved in residence life, if they want to join a club or organization, they want to try and, and walk on a sports team or they're an intercollegiate athlete, any of those different things uh, among 300 other things they could be involved in. The wonderful thing is Finley has every single one of those, everything you want them to be involved in, but they don't have to compete against 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, or 50,000 other students who are also trying to do the same thing. I think that's fabulous. The faculty and staff that I've had the pleasure to get to know over the years are incredible. They could be working at any school in America, which I will talk about in a few minutes, but they choose to be here, and it's a very family-oriented place, and the atmosphere just shows it. And it was interesting, on the way over here, Sean and I were walking over from lunch, and we met some of, the light, some of your children who were delightful. There were five or six young ladies. One was from Wapakoneta. One was from Strasburg. One was where? Nay, N-E-Y, Ohio. I've lived in Ohio my whole life. I didn't know that Ohio had a Nay, Ohio. But I asked them, I said, did you all know each other before today? No, we just met today. And they had stopped me to say thank you for the program earlier. I said, you're already acting like you've known each other a long time. They said, yeah, we're really getting along. It's really nice. We've just gotten to know each other today. You're going to see huge transitional differences in your children, and it is why you chose Finley and the amount of education and the degree and the quality of education that they are going to get here is pretty special. I put myself in your position. I was thinking about this last night, what it must be like to parent a college student right now. And we all, and what a crazy world, what a crazy world we've been living in. COVID, social unrest, uh, the election that's coming up, which is kind of tearing our country apart. These are very difficult times to not only be getting ready for college, but to be raising a family and, and try to have everything start on the right foot. And I thought about where would you be? And one of the things I would be saying is, will my child be safe? And what will happen if different things happen with COVID? And I, I want to put your heart at ease, and that is this. I believe that Finley will pivot and modify and adapt and change and serve your student as well as any school in America. And I say that because of this, and I hope that you can see that slide and, and, and get the full worth of what it is because I call them the invisible intangibles. And I've just had the pleasure of getting to know Sean better today. Your admission, some of you with your child going here to school, you've already had some dealings with him or his staff through the admissions process. David Emsweller is one of the top vice presidents of student affairs in America. Bill Johnston, your director of orientation, who basically navigated this morning with all the changes that had to happen for us to have such a special opening. And then later today, I'm going to be taking all of your children through a team building event where they're all going to safely meet each other. They're not going to touch each other. They're not going to get too close to where anything is dangerous for them, but they're going to meet each other. And they actually started to meet each other earlier today. And Sharinda Welton, and I'm not sure if I have the title right, somewhere around director of student activities, you have one of the best vice presidents in America, one of the best orientation directors in America, one of the admiss best admissions directors in America, and one of the best student activities directors in America, and they all happen to work here. They could be working at any college campus in America, but they love it here, and they stay here, and they're the tip of the iceberg. What does that mean? That all gets transitioned and transferred to your children who get to be involved with and work with either them or the organizations or the staffs that they get to work with and that they train. You will see, and I, I often tell my, my parents when I do this live in front of a group, 
you will see a profound difference in your children by Thanksgiving break. And I know that many schools across America, and I'm not 100% sure about Finley, whether that's going to be the end of the semester, it is. So when Thanksgiving break comes around and they come home, you're going to see a profound difference. And some of you are like, thank goodness, I need to see a pro." Some of you are like, no, we're pretty happy with where they are. We'll also talk about that as well. Now, I realize, and I, if, you're on this, if you're on this with me, thank you for being with me, especially if you've had children in college before. But I know that some of you have been down this orientation road before. I know it. Maybe not virtually. Maybe not having your presenter standing in a TV studio doing the program for you. But you have been involved in this before. And I would ask you this. I would ask you not to shortchange or cheapen this experience at all because it's this child's particular time in the spotlight. And I know that you've heard this before, but many of them missed their proms. Many of their graduations were completely different. They had seasons canceled, whether they were an athlete, a musician, a thespian, different types of things were canceled. The isolation and the quarantining and the distance that we can't imagine when we were growing up. I've tried to put myself in the position, and I'll say something else to you in a minute about what I told your children today, and the social unrest that they've had to watch and face and the rioting in our country, and just the, the types of things that have been wearing upon them. Make sure that you give this child every opportunity to get the full, full amount of this orientation program and the first week or so in school, the welcome week, so that they can really enjoy the experience and gain what they can. And I, I thought about this when I was driving up here today. Isn't it amazing how fast time flew? Some of you are thinking, there's no possible way I moved my child on the campus yesterday. There's no possible way my child will begin commuting to college soon. They were just that big. And I feel that same way. And this is a picture of my children when they were much younger. I was holding my three-month-old daughter. My three-year-old daughter was standing next to me. My, my stepson getting into a drawer he shouldn't be getting into. Some things never change. And then there's some other pictures of my daughter getting a master's from NYU and the other one getting a degree from the University of Cincinnati. Where did that time go? It's impossible that those years have flown by. But I want you to think this. I want you to understand that you need to be proud of yourselves. Why? Because your children are your living legacy to places you will never visit and to people that you will never meet. Some of you are going, that's really cool that they are my living legacy. Some of you are going, it's okay that they're my living legacy. And some of you are like, they're Finley's problem now. And I, I get that. But understand that you had a huge part in shaping who they are. And I would like you to do this. And I don't care where you're watching me. I don't care. I don't know if you care if you're here on campus watching on a phone, back at a hotel, watching on a tablet, or on your computer, or you've actually driven back home and you're in your own homes or businesses. I want you to repeat after me out loud after I say it. Ready? We did the best we could. Let's do it again. We did the best we could. And I believe that to be true. These children, think about what they've grown up with. These children grew up with Columbine. They have grown up with someone bombing a marathon. They have grown up with someone who backed the tr truck in front of a school and blew it. The things, the atrocities, COVID, everything. These children have grown up with some tough times, and it's not been the easiest to parent. Do you know what else has made it difficult? And I'm going to grab it. Do you know what else has made it difficult to parent? Cell phones. Cell phones have made it difficult to parent. Why? Let me ask this. Many of you, at least once, held a family movie night at your house. You did. And you said, okay, this Friday night, Friday night, stay home. Movies. No, I don't want it. Movies. So you're watching movies at your house, and it's getting later. Maybe you're watching a horror movie, and it's getting to be 1130, 1145, midnight, 1215, 1230, depending on when you started watching. And one of your children, you look over, one of them's on their phone going, ba -ba -ba, da -da -da, da -da -da, texting away. If you look at your child and go, hey, your child's name, who are you texting? It's 1230 in the morning. They can look at you and go, why don't you trust me? And if you don't say a word at all, and it's 1230 in the morning or almost 1 o'clock, and they're texting, they can stop and go, you know, it's 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'm texting. Don't you care? So if we inquire, we're a micromanaging parent. If we don't even ask, we don't care. It sucks to be us. So I believe that you've done a really, really nice job and that you did the best that you could. Keep in mind that for some of your children, not necessarily all, but for some of your children or if you're a guardian, the, the student that you're working with and sending off to college, that 
Some of them have been a big fish in a small pond. They were top-notch in high school. They were popular. They were the best athlete. They were the best looking, smartest, cheer, whatever it might be. The, the list goes on and on. They were a big fish in a small pond. Now they are going to a much bigger pond. Now, if you can see that beach, there might actually be more people on that beach than live in Finley. But the point is this. It's still going to be different. One of the things I talked about earlier today with your children was that they get a fresh start. College is an absolute fresh start. If they didn't really get involved in high school, but they might want to in college, great. If they were overly involved in high school and they want to become moderately involved in, in college and get good grades and make friends, etc., they get this wonderful fresh start. And so you're going to hear me talk about encouraging them to get off to a quick start. Keep that in mind as we talk about the rest of the program. Let me ask this. Please get ready. Once again, I'm going to give it to you. I'd like you to... Oh, have we? Okay, great. So we've had a lot more people sign on. So if you'll get ready with your own phone or if you want to write something down, this is a live interaction. So if you want to text Sean, your director of undergraduate admissions, wonderful guy, uh, bought me lunch, thank you. Uh, so his number is 419-721-6096. One more time, 419-721-6096. What I'd like right now is for any of you for any of you to text an answer to this. Why is it so difficult? Why is it so difficult to send our children off to college? Now, some of you are saying, it's not difficult. I left them. I'm gone. They're Finleys. Nice job. Some of you are going, no, I miss them already. And some of you are like, this changes our life, whatever it might be. But if you don't mind, and Sean, if you'll let me know if any come in, you can just stop and let me know. Why is it so difficult to send our children off to college? And let me just keep going, and I'll answer any of those that come in. You know why it's tough? Because we know this. We're not just sending our children off to college. We're sending them off to life. And man, has life changed for all of us. Think of how life has changed for all of us. Basically, what you're going through is the first or one of the three of life's necessary losses that we face as adults. Number one, what's the first necessary loss that we face as adults? The passing of our own parents. I have unfortunately lost both my parents. I think of them every day. I was thinking about them when I was driving here today from Cincinnati to come here to uh, actually do these programs today. I was thinking about them, but some of you have lost one or both. Some of you still have them. One, you might be distant from one or both of your parents, and if you have the purview and the means to repair that relationship, if it's within your ability, you know, please do. Life's very quick. But the first thing is we face the loss of our own parents. Number two sending our children off to college, which you're experiencing right now. And number three, God willing, someone will marry our child and take them out of our family and make them a part of someone else's family. Or we gain another family, we gain additional family. So the loss of our parents, college, and our children getting married, and uh, domestic partnership, whatever they might be involved in. College is a big one. At the same time, and I talked to your children about this earlier today, at the same time, your children are going through three transitions as well. Number one, from high school to college. Let me make something clear. In case you see your child struggling a bit, I don't care how great their high school was. I don't care how advanced placement it was. I don't care if they got a 4.6. I don't care. It's not college. One of your children might get their first B. One of them might get a paperback with a bunch of red on it and go, why are there red marks on my paper? Maybe they're involved in a group project and the group project didn't go as well as possible. But number one, they're going from high school to college, and this college is no joke. Number two, they are going from the end, excuse me, from the dependence, they're going from the dependence of living under your roof with you to the independence of, and even if they're commuting, it's still the independence of being a college student. Now, you can ask yourself some questions that will help you to ascertain how well your child is ready to be independent of you. Here's one, and don't lie to me, don't lie to me. How many of you acted as the alarm clock for your children throughout high school? You made sure their booties got up and got ready for high school. How many of you? I see you. All right. How many of you, uh, how many of your children know how to cook a meal? Okay. How many of your children know how to cook a meal? How many of them would burn jello? Okay. <laughs> sure. Let me stop right there. Sure. Sure. 
So let me. There's two different things there. Safety in this current world, number one, and having them closer to home. Does that mean being here makes them closer to home, or they'd rather them be closer to home? Do you know? Having them closer to home. Here's. I've only met. Your, I've met your children for a little over an hour and a half today. My program with them was an hour and a half. By the way, later this evening, I'll be taking them through a team building event called Building Oiler Nation, where within their families, they're already put into uh, Finley families. Within those families, I'm going to help them meet each other even more and connect to each other in a safe way like they did today. When I, when I walked in today, here, here's what I think about what you've asked me. I can see that Finley's taking this very seriously. I walked in today an hour or so before the first person even thought about coming in I saw that all the seats had been socially distanced. So when the students came in, and the students didn't come in and slide their chairs together, the students came in and sat. They had their masks on. They were talking to each other. They weren't talking to each other, bending over to get in each other's face. They were talking to each other. I believe what you will see is this. Is the university going to take every precaution? Absolutely. I don't think I can go five steps around this campus without finding something that will help me clean my hands. I know that they're going to highly encourage everyone to wear their masks. I know that cleanliness on campus is going to be taken to the nth degree. And I also believe this. You have to believe that you've raised a pretty bright child. Now, I know some of you are thinking, yes, but I think their middle name should be, what were you thinking? I get that. But at some point in time, we have to let our children grow up. We have to believe that we have raised them to be independent, mature creatures who have their own health and well-being in mind. And I have to say, every person, even the young ladies, and if I'm not mistaken, Sean, I think it was six, seven young ladies. They kept a bit of distance from each other. I don't know if they were six feet, but they were a couple feet from each other. They all had their masks on. They were delightful. They didn't come closer to me, and they didn't come closer to each other, and they didn't talk into each other's faces. Just perhaps, just maybe, Everything that we're saying and doing is having an impact. Having them closer to home, at some point in time, these children have to grow up. They are going to get a college education. They are going to move on to law school, grad school, med school, whatever it might be, vet school. They are going to get jobs. They are going to have families. They're going to have lives. And they're going to be the ones asking someone speaking, hey, what do you think about safety? You've done a really good job raising your children. They're going to one of the best schools in America. Let's believe that's a pretty great combination. Okay, five hours from home. I get that. I do get that. Somebody said, look, my child's five hours away from home. They're in a different state. Here's the beautiful thing about this world now. There's a beautiful thing about it. There's a tough thing about it. It's called a cell phone. It's called face FaceTime. It's called Zooming. What are we on right now? What's, what are we doing right now? Live streaming on what? YouTube. So we're on a, there are quite a few ways for you to stay directly in touch with your children. Now, you might say, but I'm five hours away, but the faculty, staff, and student leaders are not five hours away. So if there is a situation that involves your child where you believe they need some assistance, that assistance will probably happen very quickly and very easily as long as your child asks for that help, goes to the right people, and you as a family communicate. And five hours is a long way. When something's important, it's not as far. I mean, I, since I drove, it was almost four hours for me today. So I get how far it, it is. But again, your ability to stay in touch shortens that distance. And I'm going to talk about how to be a great college parent. And I don't want you to knee jerk. Just because you're five hours away, if you're going to end up coming here or they're going to end up coming home, I want it to be for a legitimate reason not for a knee-jerk reaction because someone quickly panicked over something they didn't have to. I'm going to grab a drink. I hope you don't mind. Okay. Sure, that's fine. So go ahead and say it to me. I'll repeat it. So this, this question, I'm sorry that I didn't repeat the other questions. I'm sorry that I didn't know that you couldn't hear them. There are still so many things that we need to teach her. Number one, you've done a really nice job, better than you think you've done. Number two, they are going to be surrounded by children as nice and as developed as they are, and some will be even more mature than they are, who will also help guide them. And number three, why do you think they're coming to college? They are coming to college to go to the next level of their development, academically, personally, socially, 
uh, to become a mature human being. And if you just hopped on the call, I said, why is it so difficult to send our children off to college? Because we're not sending them off to college. You can't teach them everything. You can't possibly do that. We can't teach our children everything. We have to believe that they can learn some things on their own through life's experiences from going to one of the best schools in America and being surrounded by like-minded people with the same drive and the same energy. Also, you have the ability to talk to each other. Do I think you should be talking every day? No. Do I think you should be smothering each other? No. Do I think you should make your conversations matter? Yes. And maybe you have an agreement with your child that every time you talk, there's at least one meaningful discussion on a topic. So, are you making friends, real friends? Have you gotten involved in anything? How have your first week of classes been for real? Don't lie to me. How has it been? Have real discussions. Why does it mean that your teaching them has to stop because they're not at home? You still have a number of means to teach your children's life's lessons and to watch them and help them grow and mature as a human being. Ah, you just said, uh, in reality, my child's ready. They're ready for school. They're ready to move on, and I'm not. Now, I don't know whom this came from, and I don't know the situation, but one of the things you're going to hear me say probably two or three times is your children do not need you to be their best friend. They're going to make best friends here. They're going to make really close friends here starting later today. They started earlier today. The interaction at my first program was pretty special, but tonight's team building event is even farther. They're going to make wonderful friends here. They need you to be their parent. What's it mean to be a college parent? And I'm going to talk about it more. It means part tough love, kicking their booty a little bit, quit your whining, get some studying in. Okay, you and your roommate aren't getting along at the moment. Have a, have a discussion, talk to each other, have a, have a civil conversation, have a critical conversation. And so that's part of it. And part of it too is letting them make some decisions that either work or don't work and, and gaining some knowledge and gaining some maturity from that, all right? Uh, last thing, adolescence to adulthood. So they've transitioned from high school to college, and I'll come back for more questions. They're gonna go from the dependence of you to the independence of being a college student and whether that's living on campus or commuting. And the last one, they're gonna go from adolescence to adulthood. Here's the inter interesting thing about being a college student right now. They could look at any of you. They could go, Mom, Dad, meaning, you idiot, can't you tell that I need help? Or they can go, Mom, Dad, meaning, come on, you know that I'm smarter than that. You don't have to ask me something like that. I call it being a chadult. They're half child, half adult. When they want to play the child card, they can play it. When they want to play the adult card, they can do it. They can probably get away with that for a semester. Come Thanksgiving break, break ch chadult is over. They are an adult college student. Let me move on. Let me talk to my commuter parents for a minute. And also, if you happen to be a parent of someone living on campus, I still believe that you're going to gain from what I'm about to say. But my commuter parents, there's some things I think you need to understand. Number one, I believe that you and your child and, and the student that's coming here, you have to set up a mutually agreeable, mutually professional living, learning environment at home. The hardest part, it, just because they're in college doesn't mean they get to abuse the home life and, and come in at all hours of the night being loud and upsetting the home balance. They're going to be able to come and go as they please because they're in college, and we're going to talk about that. But this is still a family living under a roof, and I believe you have to come to an agreement of what that looks like. Uh, for many of your children, for many of your children, their, their schedules are going to change dramatically. And I mean dramatic. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Let's say that... Like t today, I talk to your children about different things, but I'm also known as the dating doctor, and I talk about dating relationships, romance, healthy relationships at colleges and different places all over America. And if I came to a college, my program usually doesn't start start till 9.30 p.m. Why? Because classes go till about 9.30 p.m. Students are paying a social fee, an activities fee, and they want to be able to say, hey, I'm paying my fee. I want to go see this guy speak. I want to see him perform. So if my show doesn't start till 9.30, it goes an hour and a half for sure. Then people line up to ask me questions or there's refreshments. They might not leave till midnight. They might not get home as a commuter student till 1230. You cannot be waiting at the door going, where have you been? They're going to go, college, college. They might be in study groups that don't start till 930. They might have full or part-time jobs. 
that are helping them pay and helping the family and themselves to have some money in their pockets. Their lives are dramatically going to change. And the, the one sentence that you have to lose from your vernacular is, while you're living under my roof, that was high school. They're not in high school anymore. But the living arrangement has to be civil and has to be agreed upon. Do you have something for me, Sean? All right. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Get ready. Get ready to text Sean. I'm going to give you the number again in case we had anybody pop on. Get ready to text him. Get your fingers ready. 419-721-6096. 419-721-6096. If any of you get this answer right, I will clap for you. I will live clap for you. That will be your reward. What's the number one factor that will bring your son or daughter, your child, your student? What's the number? Uh, I'm assuming they have cash, and I'm assuming that they made the grades to come back. So don't text money and don't text grades. Other than money and grades, what's the number one thing that will bring your child back for their second year, their sophomore year, whatever you call it in your home? What's, what's going to bring them back? Let me know if you get me. Come on now. Don't just stare at me through this, through this camera. What's the number one factor? Relationships and friendships. Do we have a name with that? Okay. Whoever wrote relationships and friendships, thank you. Anybody else want to give it a shot before I try the answer? Connection with people. I'm very proud of you both. Staff quality. Staff quality. His ears perked up on that. Staff quality. Confidence. Confidence. Look at you all. This is called live interchange. Thank you. What, what were the last one? Confidence. Keep going. Feeling of belonging. Relationships. Relationships. Let's stop right there. First of all, thank you. Thank you. If your children listen this well later this evening, they are going to meet everyone and form long-lasting friendships. Every single one of you is correct. Every one of those will influence whether or not they come back. The number one factor, in my humble opinion, is whether or not they form at least one meaningful relationship and feel connected to campus and feel a sense of belonging. And if you can see that picture, that is taken on the field where we would be tonight. There was some type of mud event, and those young ladies are covered from head to toe in mud from playing. Must have been a tug of war, some type of thing that they sponsor on campus. Look at their faces. Look at how happy they are, how united they are. Now, I know that was pre-COVID, so you're going, wait, there's no masks. They're covered in mud. It was pre-COVID. I know that every, Sarinda is one of the best activities <clears throat> directors in America. I know, Bill, everybody, the, the activities that go on here, they will make sure they're distancing, they'll make sure they're safe and sound, but they also want them to have a great college experience. We want your child to feel a sense of connection. We want them to feel like they belong. Did they make a connection with a roommate? Did they meet someone else that lives on the floor? Do, are they an athlete? <clears throat> Did they meet someone else on their team? Do they feel close to a faculty or staff member? Your first name, who's helping me today? AJ. AJ. AJ here in the television studio. Uh, hopefully, as time goes on, some of your children want to be involved in this as a career. Couldn't be a nicer person who's been more helpful today. Every event I've done today, he has set it up and torn it down. He's an army of one person. These are the type of people that your children can associate with and take their life, their career, their drive to the next level but we want them to connect, and connect they will. So encourage your child. Encourage them to get off to a fast start. I've been told <clears throat> that next week <clears throat> excuse me, is Welcome Week, and as part of Welcome Week, and I don't know the name of the event, I apologize, but there'll be some type of event where your child can see the clubs and organizations that are available to them, all the wonderful clubs and organizations. I told your children that I want them to minimally join three things. Do I want them joining five or ten? No, it's overwhelming. I want them to be a student first, involvement second, relationships third, that type of thing. But I want them to join. I made it clear today. You can ask your child. I said, I want you to join three things. Number one, join something that you love. If you already love something outdoors, I love taking pictures. Um, I'm a gamer. Join something you love. Number two, join something that will challenge you. I'm not a very social person. Maybe I'll join the program board. I've never tried to help govern a campus. Maybe I'll run for student government. I don't speak very well in front of people. Geez, there's a communication club. Maybe that would be for me. So number one, join something they love. Number two, join something that will challenge them. Number three, 
I believe that every student, and I don't know how intramural sports are going to be with the COVID, so don't ask me. I don't work here. But if they do operate, I think everyone should join at least one intramural sport. I don't care if someone has no athletic bone in their body. <clears throat> I want them involved in a team effort, a team sport. Will they make friends on their team? Hopefully. Will they date someone off their team? Maybe, maybe not. Will they make friends or date one of the friends of someone who comes to watch? Yes, they will. That's how it works. You enhance your sphere of influence. <clears throat> so sorry that I'm choking up a little bit. Something in the air. So please, encourage your children to get connected. Encourage them to get off to a fast start. It's going to foster friendships. It's going gonna, it's gonna to ease some homesickness. And that one parent says that she's got, or he, has homesickness in reverse. The child seems to be doing okay. And you know what will happen? That will ease too because you will develop a new routine at home. You'll pick up a new hobby. You might make something called friends that you dropped because you've had children. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's talk about sibs at home. Do you have anything before I go on? I do have a question. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, you said that they have a blended family. And their part of the family knows about it. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking of their family Sure. Sure. So let me say, there's a blended family who's asked a question. Their part of the blended family knows the experience. The other part of the blended family. Right, and how do they teach their child that it's okay to like, concentrate on school more than the relationship with the other part of the family? All right. Here's the best piece of advice I have for a blended family where half the family is like, no, we're VIPs, we get it. We're veteran informed parents. The other half, the blended family, hasn't been through this before. Do not strip the other side of the family from their experience of doing this. Remember when you were going through it? Remember how special it was for you to get over some of those? Now, if there's something that you can help that would tremendously ease a burden for the family that hasn't lived this life yet, okay. But to strip them from the entire you, what you went through, to watch. Do you know why? Because you watched your child get on campus or commute. You watched them build confidence. You watched them struggle. And you watched them reach a success. I don't want that stripped from the other side. Now, you can ask some prompting questions. Instead of just giving them an answer, say, do they really need a car on campus? It is Finley, all right? It's not New York City. Do they really, uh, what do you, do you, have they gotten involved in anything? So they had a discussion with their roommate that didn't go well. <clears throat> Did they happen to try this? You can offer things like that. Just don't strip them from their experience that you had to get your child to this point. Anything else? All right, let's talk about for the sibs at home. One of the things I've been asked for in the last couple of years is people will say, <clears throat> David, we have sibs at home. It's really tough. They're so tight. They're already sad. What can we do? Here are some suggestions. Uh, number one, make a list of the fun future events. Now, that's a difficult thing to do right now. Why? Because we don't necessarily know what the fun future events, what's COVID going to allow. And isn't this a strange time for all of us? Just know that you're doing your best your child's doing your best, and I guarantee you Ashlyn's doing their best. But number one, make a list of potential fun future events. Number two, with your children who are at home, discuss the perks of the new situation. By the way, did you know that that room opened up and now there's an extra TV? No fighting over that Xbox, whatever it might be. There have to be a few perks that have happened because your child went off to college. Share those perks with your children and watch their little heads go, wait a minute, this might not be so horrible. Number three, big one, be careful not to make plans that involve your college student without clearing them with your college student first. And who knows what the campus's policies. I was at a campus the other day where I was allowed to come on campus, and I might be one of the few, the strangers, quote, strangers to campus outsiders to campus that they're going to allow on campus. So before you make any plans, please make sure that you have run them by and cleared them with your college student. Your, your children from home, let them arrange for the care packages. They know what, that other, what the other child loves and it can be a big deal for them to be a part of the care packages. And then just like we were talking about earlier, how about a nice FaceTime call? How about a nice Zoom call? Whatever it might be, send them a cute text with everybody at dinner, uh, the dog's out frolicking, a cat is up in the window, whatever it might be, little things that they can help that will keep the family connected during this, especially during this transitional period. Some of you, and I, I already heard one parent, I heard it loud and clear, 
Some of you are experiencing separation anxiety. While you're watching this program with me, some of you might have a lump in your throat right now. You can barely swallow. You've been fighting back tears. Your stomach is going quickly. That's absolutely 100% normal. Separation anxiety is normal for a parent. A couple different things could be happening. Number one, you might have apprehension, apprehension about letting go of this particular child. Number two, you're thinking about your financial status for the next two to four to six to 12 years of your life. And number three, some of you are a little bit excited because you have this renewed social life because you're empty nesters. Some of you might blow off the rest of this program because you're empty nesters. They buy, you're boring, I'm gonna, whatever it might be. It's, it's a different thing. Now, let me help my empty nesters. For just a minute, I'm gonna turn dating doctor and I'm gonna help my empty nesters. Empty nesters, number one, rearrange and redecorate your home. Do you know why? There's no one there to screw it up. So you've always wanted your house in a certain way, a certain place, do it. Make the house the way you want it to be. If you want to leave their room semi-normal so they can come home to some normalcy for them, fine. But you now have a house that you live in that they don't, at least part of the year, unless they're commuting, and you can do some nice things to your home. Number two, I want you to reconnect with what I call lost friends. What's a lost friend? When, when, you were, when your children were growing up, when they were that big, you had something called friends. They were friends who also had children that age. Then all of a sudden... Your child went into soccer, their child went into volleyball. Your child went into this, their child went into that, and all of a sudden, you're not as close to that family anymore, but you were, you really liked each other. Well, guess what? Their child should be college age. Why don't you be the one to reach out and say, you know, Sam, you know, Jenny, you know, Rick, you know, whatever it might be. We used to be close, and our child just went off to college. Did yours? Really? Would you like to go back out and do something together? Sure we would. Be the first ones. Number three, recreate the first couple dates you ever went on as a couple, if you can remember the first couple dates you ever went on as a couple. And number four, I want you to take a couple of trips alone. Now, I know COVID is a factor here, so I want them to be one tank trips. I want them to be safe. I want you to keep yourself safe. But go take a one tank trip somewhere where you can go be safe and be alone. Why? There'll be no one in the car or the room going, Mom, Dad, I've got to get back home. I've got practice. I've got this. I've got a date. I just don't want to be with you. You're boring. Go enjoy your own lives. Question? All right, great. <clears throat> I want you to practice what I call informed texting. What's informed texting? Whenever you go to text your child, the first question you can ask them is, not can ask them, that you should ask them. First question to ask them is, are you in class or studying? If the answer back is yes, your next text should be, just get in touch with me when you're done. Unless it's an emergency. I'm not telling you not to get in touch with each other during an emergency. But if it's not an emergency and they're in class or they're studying, <clears throat> let them be in class. Let them study. Do not distract them. Why? It's hard enough to get our children in the mood to be in class, not be distracted, and to be studying. If it's not important, and then they might go, no, 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 no. But you go, no, it's really okay. Finish studying, finish class. Why? I want you to calculate how many dollars are in that text with how long you're distracting them from listening to their instructor or for studying for what might be a major question, quiz or a major test or <clears throat> just to be involved in class coming up where they can be a part of the discussion where they're educated and they have informed opinions and intents. Let them study. Let them be in class. Don't distract them unless it's absolutely positively important. Let's just say this. You absolutely rock. You rock. And what I'd like you to do right now, and I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, they're patting each other on the back. And can anybody, let's text. Can anybody tell me? I don't even want to give the names of the people on the show. Can anyone tell me what show that is from? I will say this. I'm actually friends with Mr. Belding in real life. He used to be a speaker on the college market. We became pretty good friends. And the person that played Mr. Belding is a really nice guy, and I actually know him. Anybody know what show that's from? Did we get a text? Any texts? Going once, going saved by, the saved by the bell, correct, saved by the bell, very nice job. Why, everybody, give yourself a pat on the back. If you're if with somebody else, give each other a safe pat on the back. Why are you giving each other a pat on the back? Because what you need to know from yesterday on drop-off day or the first day that your children start to commute to school, you become smarter, you become more brilliant in your children's eyes for the rest of their lives. 
Mothers, you're not a micromanaging monster. Fathers, you're not an overbearing ogre. And at some point in time, possibly around Thanksgiving, your child might say to you, you know, Mom, you know, Dad, I kind of understand why you made some of the decisions that you've made in the past. After you pick yourselves up off the floor because you have fainted, because your child said that to you, you're going to realize that they're starting to get it. They're starting to understand why you said and did some of the things that you did. However, everybody focus, focus. Very little you say today, very little you said yesterday, very little that you say tomorrow, and for a week or so to come, very little of what you try to tell them now is going to stick. Okay? A couple of reasons. Whole new thing. They're so excited. They're distracted. And I talked to your children today about something called the hmm factor. What's a hmm you see someone walk by, you stop and go, hmm. Okay, your children are seeing hmms too, believe me. They're going to be distracted. Plus, it doesn't necessarily matter what you're telling them right now because you've already done everything you can, everything, to lay the foundation that will help them make better decisions ethically, morally, physically, and spiritually. And some of you are saying to yourself, oh, I feel good about this child. I think they're going to make some fabulous decisions. Some of you are thinking, I feel okay about this child. I believe they'll, think they'll make some moderately nice decisions. And some of you are thinking they're Finley's problem now. And I get that. Now, I also know this. As parents, you're going to try to do something. So if you're going to insist on trying to help them, here's three quick suggestions. Number one, remind them how much you love them. Uh, nobody can hear that enough. Just You might not want to just go too over the top, but it's okay to let your children know that you love them. Number two... Remind them to use common sense. There's something about going into college that makes students tend to forget to use common sense from time to time. A reminder about that is just fine. Number three, I want you to remind your child that if they fail to adequately communicate with you, you are going to find a way to adequately communicate with them. I'm not talking about over-communication. I'm not talking about helicopter parenting. I'm not talking about any of that. But let's say that you have a child who's independent by nature and they might not have talked to you for two or three weeks. You're like, come on. They might have said, send money. Uh, there's too much corn around here, whatever it might be. But you haven't heard from them for a while. I want you to send the following letter to them. It's basically, dear, whatever the name of your child, we are so proud of you. We know how hard it is to adjust to college life. Since we haven't uh, heard from you in a while, we can only assume that you're making new friends, studying hard, getting involved, and beginning to really enjoy the college experience. Well, we believe that hard work deserves a reward. So here is $50 because we think you deserve it. Have a great weekend. We love you, mom, dad, important person, guardian, brother, sister, fish, dog, whatever. I want this to be a handwritten or it can be a typed out letter. That's fine. I want you to fold it and I want you to mail it to your child without the $50 bill without the $50 bill. Once they rip the letter to shreds, they see if the 50 has stuck to the sticky part of the envelope, whose phone's gonna blow up? Yours. And you're gonna go, got your letter, didn't you? I can't tell you. And by the way, if you wanna drop, if you wanna drop a text or if you wanna drop me an email, I'll give you a really easy email to remember. It's the dating doctor, the word the, the word dating, the word doctor, the dating doctor at mac.com, M-A-C like a Mac computer, dot com. If you want the $50 letter, I'll be happy to send it to you, The Dating Doctor at Mac.com. It's really funny over the years, the number of parents who've said to me how much they laughed, and then what they do? They had a discussion as a child and a family about what the appropriate way to communicate was while someone's getting used to going to college and while a family is getting used to not having them around like they once had them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this by and go right to here. There's something I believe in called the mm-hmm, mm-hmm, honey, what I think I hear you saying theory. What is that? This is how I believe you parent a college student. You're going to get a text message. You're going to get a phone call, probably a text message going, this is too hard. I'm not doing well. I'm not making friends. I ran for a position. I didn't make it. COVID is driving me crazy. There's going to be blah, 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 blah. And because we're all so connected to each other, these all come into you. The first thing I want you to do is this. I simply want you to say to your child, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everyone practice this. Husbands, you have it down to a science. Wives, try it for the first time in your life. Ready? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. After that, I want you to say to your child, honey, what I think I hear you saying. 
and I want you to say back to them and paraphrase what they just said to you. So you might go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So honey, what I hear you saying is you're having a bit of trouble with your roommate. Why do you think that might be? And then you'd be quiet. They're going to babble, 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 babble. They give you a response and go, well, what do you think about that? Babble, babble, babble. They're going to go, mom and dad, that was great. I know how to handle it. Thank you. And they'll hang up. You're going to give your children a chance to grow up and make these decisions and learn to fight their own battles. Do you know why? Will you be there every time they have a battle at work? No. Will you be there every time they have a battle in a relationship? No. And with children? No, you're not. When nobody was there for you every single time either, and they need that time to grow up. Anything before I go on? Yeah, thank you. There's something I believe in called the 24-hour rule. Give, unless something's an absolute emergency. <clears throat> That's a health emergency. If there's something going on and it's an emergency, an emergency is an emergency. If it's not an emergency, give it 24 hours, and I will tell you why. You might get a phone call from your child going, you can't believe this. My roommate did this. My roommate did that. And on this, there's a teacher right there and this dean of students, whatever it might be. And you're like, oh, my gosh, honey, that's terrible. But you're going to go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, honey, what I think I hear you saying. The next day, 24 hours later, 48 hours later, you're going to ask your child, so how did it go with your roommate? Oh, that was over in 10 minutes. Let me tell you what else happened. Unless something needs for to be addressed right at that minute, give them 24 hours. Why? Give them a chance to figure out the answer on their own to make a play on that answer, to ascertain how well it went, and figure out whether they were successful or not, and what their next move should be. Why? Because someone let you do it, and that's why you're parenting a pretty phenomenal college student. Give them their chance. Something called purposeful parenting. And I have a friend named Harlan who's also a speaker, and I love this quote. And I'm just going to read it directly because I don't want to misquote uh, him and not do him the justice, but I love this quote. He said, parents need to give their children permission to struggle. Listen to what I'm saying. Parents need to give their children permission to struggle and feel uncomfortable. It's against our nature, correct? Um, it is your job to equip your child the best you can and be there when things get tough, but you can't prevent mistakes, and in fact, they need them to learn. That's it right there. That's college parenting in a nutshell. We have tried every moment of every day to keep our children from harm and to get them to the point where they are today. And this is a really interesting thing. Your entire life up till now has been prepared to drop your child off at college or be prepared for them to start to commute from home. From this point forward, you're part of the equation, not the entire equation and not the entire problem and program. There's an entire campus that's ready to help your children go to the next level of their development. Stop for a quick one. If you have any questions, again, for anybody that popped on or doesn't have it, 419-721-6096, 419-721-6096. Can I answer anything directly for you before I head on to any part of the program? I'm going to come to a close here very quickly. Sure. Thank you for being on, by the way, and thank you all for your help. And It's nice to breathe, so thank you. I'm going to go on, and he'll, uh, Sean will tell me if any of your questions come in, and I will chill. One of the things you can still do, whether it's home, whether it's, whether it's a Skype, whether it's Zoom, whether it's FaceTime, whether it's a phone call, I don't care what it is, I want you to model resiliency for your children. It's what we've been doing for six or nine months now, depending on when this craziness all started. Model resiliency. What's it mean to be resilient? And being resilient is a choice, whether or not we are. And I talked to your children about this. I covered this with them this morning. Resilience is this. It's how quickly we recover from setbacks and misfortunes. How quickly do we bounce back using our strengths, our mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual strengths? How quickly do we bounce back? Here's what I said to your children. They get a grade they weren't happy with. They get a grade that has upset them. Do they let them devastate them? Does it devastate them? And then the next couple grades they get in that class and other classes suffer because they can't get past that? Or do they stop and step back, look what happened, ascertain the best course of action to move forward so that that doesn't happen again, or so they give themselves a better chance. They, they miss an opportunity. They didn't get elected or selected for something. Going to make them sad? Probably. Should it paralyze them so they don't move on and do other things or get involved in other organizations? No. It should motivate them to figure out how they put themselves in a better position to be more successful next time. Resilience. Model it for your children. Less complaining, 
more thoughts about how actual circumstances can be handled and how we can reach a victory over certain things. During COVID, we've all done this as a family. We've had to adapt to new routines. We have managed and coped with isolation and quarantine. We're trying to form and mend and sustain healthy relationships. And we're trying to keep ourselves mentally and physically healthy. Sean has lost 80 pounds in how many months? In eight months, he's lost 80 pounds. I'm trying not to hate him. He's a handsome, nice guy. But uh, you actually, you've motivated me. And let's, let's do that also. Instead of letting COVID get to him, he said, uh-uh, let me take it on. Maybe we can all learn from that. And so if you can model healthy relationships and healthy behaviors and healthy thought processes for your children, those are the types of discussions I would like to see you have. Last couple things, and I talked to this about your children, with your children, they're going to have to be resilient in the classroom. They're going to have to be resilient in their activities and in their relationships. And as they adapt, every day we're hearing new things. We will adapt, the school will adapt, and so will your child. Their communication patterns are going to change. It's the beginning of the school year. Back and forth, mom, dad, mom, dad, whatever it might be. That's going to go away. Do you know why? Classes, tests, friendships, involvement. They're not going to keep communicating with you at the level they are right now. So prepare yourself. So what can you do? Send some care packages. Uh, send maybe a copy of a hometown newspaper if your town still has a hometown newspaper. But be careful that the lead story isn't about their ex who's now dating someone else. Uh, remember the seasonal changes. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's like 100 here today. It will not be 100 in Findlay in a few months. So maybe that gives you uh, an excuse to send some packages this way. And some things you know they might love. If there's creature comforts that they love or certain foods that they love, maybe that's something that you can do to support them. Go ahead. question was, we have a child at home who's going to college virtually. We have a, a student who's going to be coming on campus and beginning the campus experience. How do we motivate the one at home to take on more of a role of, of being on campus? I believe it'll happen naturally. They are going to watch the other child have a different experience. They either want that same experience or they don't. I don't know about your children. But if I tell my children, I want you to go do something, I want you to do it now, and if you don't do it, I'm going to be disappointed. They'll go, well, Dad, be disappointed because I'm not doing it. My children will do something when they believe it's in their best interest, when they see that it would be more fun than what they're doing, and that it would have more of an impact on their life. Best thing you can do, not harp at the one who's studying digitally and, and on virtual situation. Why? They're in college they're virtually studying in college. They might be doing really well. So number one, be thrilled that you have two college students. Number two, what's probably gonna happen, the one child will see the other child have that experience. They're either gonna want the same experience or they won't. So maybe you can just foster more discussions where all three of you are talking and the one on campus says, oh my gosh, it was great. Went to a program today. Uh, it was really cold out, so some of us went they'll hear that other experience. They're either going to want it or they don't. But if you try to, over the top, encourage the one to get on campus, it might backfire. And there's nothing wrong right now with being a virtual college student. I'd be proud of them. They're still going to school. Is there another one? All right. Long-distance relationships. Quite a few of your children raised their hands today that they were in long-distance relationships. Focus in here. I'm going to help you. Some of you hope that your child stays, oh, I hope it works out. Some of you are hoping it doesn't. I might make some of you happy. 50% of long-distance relationships fail within the first year. 90% or so fail within four years or five years. Some of you are like, yay. Some of you are like, no, I like that person. And I taught your children quite a few important things about relationships today. Some things I think you might have enjoyed as well. What do I want you to do? Number one, focus. Stay out of it unless you're asked. Don't pry about their long distance relationships. Let them come to you. If it's one of those things, and what are you gonna do? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, honey, what I think I hear you saying, let them talk back to you. So number one, stay out of it. Number two, prompt them with answers. Don't just deliver hand-delivered hand answers to them. Prompt them, let them think things through. Number three, listen twice as much as you talk. Number four, hear this, hear it loudly. Do not bash 
the person they're dating and go, I'm so glad you two are having, I'm so glad it broke up. Do you know why? Because they could get back together. And then you go, oops, didn't mean it. <laughs> I'm glad you're back together. Be careful of going too far negative or too far over the top if it's not someone that you want to see them with. Now, I'm going to say this too, though. Sometimes when people have love goggles on, when your child's in love with someone, they might not see some of the negative behaviors. So if you're going to talk to your child about a relationship they're in, keep emotion out of it and stick to the facts. You're not studying as much. You're not as happy. We rarely see you smile. Stick to the facts. Facts can't be refuted. Emotions can be. Hope that helps. I talked to your children today about how to get through a bad breakup. I told them to keep their distance. They can't be smothering. They can't stay on social media. If, they, if they've broken up, they've got, to, they've got to go separate ways and keep each other at, at bay. Uh, they have to stay active. I encourage them to get involved on campus so they don't sit around and think about that person. It's going to take some time. It took them time to fall for that person. It's going to take them time to get over that person. And the last one, they have to exit on their own terms. They might have to send a note to that person or an email and saying, look, this is how and why I think things ended. It cannot start off with horrible negative. It can't start off, you jerk, you it can't, can't get bad and nasty. Why? Because the other person is going to say, wow, uh, I really hurt you. You can't get over me. I guess I won. They didn't win anything. They have me. I told them that. They have you. They're going to keep their distance. They're going to stay active. It's going to take some time, and they're going to exit on their own terms. Last couple of things in the program, and I will take any more questions, and I'll let you have lives. Uh, and I'm always a screen away. I'll make sure that you have my information. I'm always a screen away. First year college musts. Number one, your children, are going to, some of them are going to have to adjust being away from college, for, or from home, excuse me, adjust from being away from home perhaps for the first time. And some of you are wondering, gee, that roommate situation, that's going to be tough. And some of you are thinking, I pity their roommate. I, I get that. Some of them have never had a roommate before, and you're thinking, that poor roommate. I hope this works out. They have to adjust. Number two, uh, I'm so sorry. The first one is after just being away. Number two is living with a roommate for the first time. Number three, they have to develop their personal identity. Why? Because what happened in high school doesn't matter. It does, but it doesn't. They might have been one of the best athletes in high school, but they come here and the sport that they were the best in, there's three people on campus that can kick their booty. So they got to be careful about how cocky they're getting when they're playing that sport when someone else can actually kick their booty. They've got to realize what happened then was then, what happens now. And college is fluid. Right now, they might be the best at something on campus. So this man over here and his staff recruit some amazing people to come on campus next semester. Now they're not the best at it anymore. That can be humbling, and that's what college is all about. It's a fluid environment. They have to learn some basic life skills, such as white underwear washed with a red sock equals pink underwear. Somebody said, how do I keep teaching my child? It was one of the earlier questions. If they still don't know how to do under, uh, underwear wash or they don't know how to wash clothes without ruining them or anything that's a basic, simple life skill, have a phone call, have a Skype, have a laundry Zoom, take them through the process. Those are fun. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think that's over the top. Those can actually be fun things that you can do as a family endeavor. I believe they have to develop a personal spirituality. If not, one will develop during midterms and finals. I can promise you that. They will, they will develop some spirituality at that point when things are a little tougher. But if they were the type of young man or woman who was really involved in church or synagogue or temple or whatever it was, they may keep doing that here. If they weren't, they may pick it up. They, they may not go that direction. But if you can encourage them to at least give some spiritual thought and how they can ground themselves when times get tough or to give themselves a break so there's heart, mind, body, and soul balance, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. They have to learn to manage their uh, freedom or they're going to experience failure. It's Thursday night. They have a huge test on Friday. All their friends are going out Thursday night. So they say, no, you guys, I'll go out Saturday. I can't tonight. I've got a huge test tomorrow. So they stay in and buckle it in and study. Or they go, oh, no, I'll get up tomorrow morning and study. I can, I can get some studying in. Do you know what they call people who blow off Thursday night and try to get up Friday morning to study for a Friday test? They call them transfers. So try to encourage your children Try to encourage them to buckle it up and make some assured decisions. They have to manage their health and weight. How many of you have heard of, uh, what is it, the freshman 20, and you've heard of that? What, it's not that there's not a 20-pound gain anymore. The average college student, new college student, gains about 10 pounds over the course of the first year of school. However, so do sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Well, and you're going to notice I have, uh, I have some uh, 
ice cream cones on there. And you know, people walk around, the last thing they get is ice cream every once in a while. A piece of fruit isn't a bad idea. This, again, isn't a bad idea if you have a discussion about in terms of their health. Go ahead. The only problem in that entire sentence, for everyone listening, was that the question was, my child is commuting, should I force them to, what was the rest of it? Learn basic life skills, Learn basic life skills such as laundry. The only problem word that I think everyone in this call would hear is the word force. I try to force my children over the course of their lifetime to do certain things that look at me and go, ha, 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 ha. What, what about having a mature decision? Look, are you their maid? No. Are they living at home? Yes. What did I talk about for commuter families? Agree upon a mutually agreeable, mutually respectful living situation. Allowing their laundry to pile up or fester or fumigate your home with some wonderful smells is not fair. Make it, but I'm busy. I'm in college. I'm busy. I have a job. I have children. <clears throat> I make meals. I worry about you. We're going to have a discussion. We're going to talk about laundry. Let's talk about laundry. Let's talk about cooking. Let's talk about compound interest. Do you know what compound interest is? Do any of you watching this call know what compound interest is? Those are some conversations to have. Can you force them? Be careful of that word. I believe a mature decision about civility and about living under the same roof as cohabitants is a good idea. Another one? All right. Last couple things. They have to adjust to the academic demands. I don't care how tough their high school was. It's not Finley. This place is no joke. There are some majors here that are no joke. Not all of them are, but I know there are several. I hear students talk about it. I hear about pre-vet. I hear about business. I hear about is it their pharmacy. I hear, believe me, I hear it. And these are good students. These are good students from all the best high schools that all your children are coming from. It just means they got to buckle it up. And they will learn very quickly that they have to do that. It's called their first quiz. It's called their first test. It's getting called out in class when they're not prepared. It will take care of itself. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, I talked to your children today about being careful what they post on the Internet. Why? Why would your child, and I told this to your children, why would they choose to go to the, one of the best schools in America? And, and it is. It's one of the best schools in America. They're going to work hard. Why would they then blow it with one post or tweet or text trying to be funny or being belligerent? I ask them to have seven seconds of sanity before they post something so that they don't undo what they've been working so hard to put themselves in positions to do for years. Again, I'm going to close with this. Uh, one last thing that I'll share with you. And this is your parental legacy. Live your life in such a way that when your children think of fairness, caring, and integrity, they think of you. When they think of fairness, caring, and integrity, they think of you. Once again, they don't need you to be their best friend. If your child's your best friend, start making some friends. Some of you start texting each other on this call and go, I need a friend. I do too. I'm sad. I am too. Let's become friends. You can't put this type of pressure on your children. They're trying to be great college students. They can't also be worried about whether or not you're making friends. You're an adult. Make some friends. My, you're going to have my phone number. Say hello. I'll try to fill a little bit of a gap there and help you get past this tough time in your life but it can't be the place, the pressure that's placed on your children. Last thing I want to share is this. How do you master the college experience? How can you and your family do this? Number one, develop a solid and healthy routine, both them on campus and you as a family. I told your children today they need to adopt a two-for-one study, two hours of study for every one hour in class. If they've got a four-hour class, they should be studying eight hours a week outside of class for that class. Number three, it's got to be treated as a family effort, Utilize the many, and I mean many, resources that this campus has. And I know within student affairs, David Emsweller is a friend of mine. I know what they do. Everything, the different faculty and staff, office hours, take advantage of those. Encourage your child to take advantage of those. Firmly set priorities and goals. They should set goals where they can measure them and tell whether or not they've been reached. Setting pie-in-the-sky goals that can be measured is only going to put pressure on them. Measurable goals with outcomes, and they can find out whether they reached them or not. I told them to do this. I told them earlier today, I want them to find two mentors. I want them to find a faculty staff mentor 
who they can relate to, who can learn about them, help them grow, and maybe someday be a reference for them. And I believe they should find an upper class student as a mentor who can help them develop as a student leader. Realize that college is not a cakewalk, nor should it be. And the last thing is I want them to cherish college. This isn't a joke. It's not a cakewalk. And they should cherish that. Remember somebody said, should I, should I take all the harm? Should I make sure that my child doesn't stub their toe? No. It's why when they actually do something great, they can appreciate it because at one point in time, they didn't do it quite so well and they didn't like that feeling. I want them to not like the feeling of not accomplishing so that when they do accomplish something, they feel freaking great about it. That's what I want to happen. Last thing is this. I just want to thank you. And again, I will give you my email address. The easiest one is just the word the dating doctor. The dating doctor. Doctor is all spelled out at mac.com, the word mac.com. And I'll do my absolute best. Remind me that you were on this call and keep your questions brief. If you just have a comment, if you were hoping I'd cover a different topic, I'll add that to the program next time. And do I have any last questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. AJ, thank you for allowing us to do this today in the television studio, and it's been nice to breathe for part of the day. A little later today, I'll be taking your children through a very safe, COVID-proof team building. I believe you'll have a different conversation with your children the next time you talk to them. Good luck. I'm a screen away.